mother got here is not like that. Like, mother, baby. How many mother babies you see out of the Too many. Too many, yeah, and all of them you're real concerned. Why, though? Like, just public transportation isn't what it is up there down here, but we're trying to make it mm-hmm. bad because we're having a really bad traffic problem. But to be quite blunt about it, white people are stopping the growth of public transportation down here um, in Atlanta. They feel it. It's a place out east called Conyers in Covington. It's two cities. Yeah, my homegirl has <coughs> Jamaican dance experiences out there. Out there, okay. So mm-hmm. when I was younger, like Shout middle school, Jamaica. high school, I remember like Martyr trying to expand. Mm-hmm. And I remember the people of Covington and Conyers, their response was basically, we don't want y'all to have access to our communities like that. Right. So, no. And since then, that attitude has, everywhere has it now. North Atlanta feels like that too. So <laughs> last year, we had a vote, again, to expand the train station. Now, if you pull up a map of Marty's train station, um, that's our transit system down here. You will see that the line as it goes north is extensive. Then you'll see as it goes east, it's very short. As it goes west, it's very short. And as it goes south, it's very short. And I assume all the black people would go north. Yeah, we can all name a rapper from the east side, south side, west side. We can only name one from the north side. And he goes. So it's just, that's just how it is. And so it was on the ballot to extend Martyr and Gwinnett County voted no and actually somebody had I don't believe anybody had Martyr's Facebook I believe Martyr did this but Martyr put something on that Facebook and they said man fuck with that <laughs> <laughs> right? you thought that came from Jeff <laughs> yeah that that was so funny but the city of Atlanta jumped in I don't know I don't get on Facebook so it's not a retweet with a comment but whatever you do with a Facebook post where the post is directly up under it they're like we apologize for this absurd language we in the city of Atlanta do not mm-hmm. you know feel this way but honestly i understand the tension and the, why they're so upset like you can sit in traffic for three hours in atlanta and then you get on a train and that three hour ride is 15 minutes right and we're trying to make this accessible for everybody and grow the city because we have businesses who want to put their headquarters here and they're just like no our employees have have to be able to get, yeah, there. get to work and they're moving and picking like Amazon wanted to build out here but they said no for those same reasons so it's like their ignorance is not only stopping the growth or of people but it's stopping the growth of the city so um it's the south so I think also with that is um it's they they don't want to taint to taint their folks here they don't want to taint their neighborhood mm-hmm. it, it brings in the riffraff if you yep. will Mm -hmm. I mean, I get it. You want to preserve your little suburbia. You want to preserve your, you know, space where you feel like your kids are Mm -hmm. safe and, Mm -hmm. you know, all that other shit. But it's it's doing exactly what they intended to do, is to keep, you know, others out, whether it be a socioeconomic difference or a, well, which is a class difference or a color difference. Mm -hmm. They are uh, being successful with that. (laughs) <laughs> but all that being said people are still moving out here people are still they I mean, are because your houses are so much cheaper you get so yeah, much more I see it on Twitter it. all the time where people uh, show a box like a mm-hmm. cardboard box and then they'll show a big old mansion down mm-hmm. here or in Texas um, and people are moving for things like that like property value like, yeah. I meet people why you move to Atlanta because everybody's here, and they literally say things like property value. Mm-hmm. Um, that's interesting. I like to hear young black people speak like that um, right. when it comes to owning property. So, hey, if that's what we have to do to get us out here, then I think we could do it. But what I think, I live in Decatur. Mm-hmm. Many, many years ago, the white people of Decatur drew a line in the sand and said, this is the city of Decatur. That is Decatur. This is us. This is Mm y'all. So we have our, the city of Decatur has their own police department, school system. They're just their own entity right next to Decatur. It's just a line in the sand. Y'all stay over there, we stay over here. 
both of us, both Decatur's have grown. The city of Decatur and the regular Decatur. And of course, when the city of Decatur grows and they run out of room, they can get more things. So they're moving down Candler Road, which is like one of the blackest roads on the east mm -hmm. side. But they're moving down Candler Road. Um, we go vote. We vote and run a, like a, a really black mall that I love to death. They name it Cost Off the Cab Mall. Mm -hmm. And you can see them standing in line. They vote. Super, they're super uncomfortable. Um, they don't speak. And people, I'm not gonna lie, people do make fun of them. They'll walk by and be like, who you vote for? I already know. You know, little things like that. that but um, I notice that they're coming. I hate to say it like that, but they're, they're coming. Um, I just don't want my neighborhood to be snatched away from me. Like so many neighborhoods that are literally around mm -hmm. us right now. Um, I think that millennials who are the next in charge, we have it in us to start our own, build our own, because whatever our culture has, they like it. Mm -hmm. They love it. Okay. And if we just do us, everything else will come. And but we just have to respectfully do us. A wise man once said, um, we gotta change the way we eat, change the way we live, and change the way we treat each other. Rest in peace, Tupac. But that's true. That's still valid to this day. Like <clears throat> if we change our eating options on the our side of Decatur to like literally we have McDonald's, JJ's, Burger King, just all that same type of stuff. Right. And you go over to to the city of Decatur vegan this, vegan that, Korean barbecue, just, you know, all these different types of things. And I think if we just try to diversify ourselves, it'll kind of keep them at bay because what they say is, oh, we're coming in to do this for the community. We're going to do this and we're going to add this and that. And But if we already have those things, it's kind of, you get in where you fit in or you don't. Right. Um, but I don't know. I think we're having a real bad problem right now in Atlanta, gentrifying. It's sad. So yes, it's growing and booming for the black creatives, but they see that, and so they're like, oh, well, let's get in there while before it actually mm -hmm. hits. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like um, the housing market, you know, when you see where the bubbles are and you see where the the trends are going. It's, I mean, it's <coughs> smart business practice. Sadly, it's our the culture is like our lives. Our mm -hmm. peace of mind is business when so many others. They had an Airbnb. Airbnb came out to talk to us. Um, she was being with here at this RCIE building. And she came out because Airbnb kind of, um, in any respect, Airbnb as a company, she knows they do this. They kind of like pull their numbers and sit down and look at what's happening. And they saw that there's a lack of African Americans benefiting off of um, Airbnb. Mm -hmm. So they kind of set out on these initiatives to go to these like predominantly black cities and kind of sit down and talk and like explain how Airbnb works. But she got up there and she said something I understand is deeper than just not having access. It's the lack of home ownership and right. those different things. So they're coming out here to try to increase the presence of black people on Airbnb. But then she says that she's realizing it's a bigger issue. It's, it's home ownership. It's mm -hmm. a lack thereof. It's a lack of access to home ownership. And she was saying Airbnb is kind of like sitting down trying to figure out how can they help. So they mm -hmm. partner with the NAACP and they basically go on like tour around the different countries, I mean different cities here in the country and um, black cities, predominantly black cities. They just give us like a full blown sit down one on one education like this is what airbnb is this is what you do this is how you make money this is how you not make money this is what you can do and they also said they opened up experiences i don't know yes. if you've seen on airbnb experiences because they say okay the lack of home ownership is something that we can't fix right now but how do we get more black people on our platform and they do offer experiences and i met a guy a black guy he's a beekeeper he quit his corporate job because beekeeping the, you know, yeah. he's, he has his own honey. It's a lady who does an IG picture tour. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. All the I keep telling people experiences is the new come up. Like yeah. you're trying to make some bread. Like and start, especially for people that cannot keep traditional jobs. I know I have um, a cousin of mine, and actually I gotta put the uh, link on the website. Um, a cure. I think it's Cure for Chris, or I gotta look up what it is again, but. Her daughter has sickle cell, mm -hmm. and um, Chris's 
not even two, I think she just turned one. But my cousin can't even work normally because mm -hmm. when Chris gets sick, when she has uh, an, what do they call it, an episode, mm -hmm. when she's in, the she's in the hospital for like two weeks. Like there's no, no, she can't leave her child alone. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I gotta go to work kind of thing. You know what I mean? So it sucks for her fiance because now he's like, you know, the primary breadwinner for the whole house. Um, but it's, I feel like people that, for whatever their reason maybe can't hold traditional jobs, it's a fucking gold mine. Mm -hmm. You just pick whatever your skill is and market that shit. And it could be real campy things, because keep in mind, tourists will do anything. Yes. And that's what your market is. That's what she kept telling us. She was like, anything, she, anything that's unheard of or anything that's unique, mm -hmm. they'll do. And she literally asked us, raise your hand if you've been beekeeping before and exactly like two people raised their hand in a room for like 150 so it makes sense why mm -hmm. he was able to quit his job and not only quit his job but start his own honey um, right line so I appreciate companies like Airbnb who not only sit back and look at their numbers and say oh wow you know we have a lack of these people like, yeah but then, how can we fix it and I appreciate them because they hit a roadblock like okay we don't have a lot of black people because of lack of home ownership like that's a roadblock that you can't do something you can't, you can't one person or one right. company is not going to be able to fix but instead of them just giving up or just saying well you know we tried mm -hmm. they like they were like no we got to go back to the drawing board what is something that we can do and experience it and i mean i listened to maybe about four or five people who quit their jobs to do experiences um she was telling me about how the experiences in California, she thinks that's one of the best places that has some of the best experiences because they just, the it's a higher level of creativity out there. Mm. So it's a different way of thinking out there. So like, I never would have thought of an Instagram photo tour, you know, just I'm hey, kind of in New York. get on this van and um, all these popping Instagram, but like they, it's not one in Atlanta. And every time she said every that, major city has them, because wherever I go, yeah. when, when I'm looking up mm -hmm. shit to do in the area, that's always well, one of the things that pops yeah. up. And I and think that's cool. every even a, talking globally. Yeah. There's always going to be most Instagramable places, and you can okay. go here. So yeah. photographers get you your shit out there. Figure out a campy photographer. Mm -hmm. Whatever is gonna make you different from somebody this lady else. down here, another lady, because the country is turned into a Bollywood. They call it Bollywood, Black Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. they call it Black Hollywood, Bollywood. But um, oh, this lady, Bollywood. she me too. When <laughs> I first heard it, but she does where you can shoot a movie. Mm -hmm. So it's like a four to six hour day, um, and y'all just pick spots. She was basically said, if it's not available, we can't do it. So right. if it's not raining, you can't shoot a raining scene. But mm -hmm. you and your whoever you're with, you all shoot these different scenes all around the city, then you go back to her studio and you she edit edits a it movie up. and you get a three or four minute movie. And like all of these things are possible. Mm -hmm. All through experiences. You just gotta you just need the idea. You just need the hustle and you can yeah, make it I a think thing. I think people should share more light on Airbnb experience. Like it took it was this is not a uh, what do you call it? A sponsored uh, podcast. podcast. No, it's yeah. not. It's not That's yet. That's one of those things. Not that I'm yet, but they on. might hear this and be like, they understand what we're doing. They understand our mission. You don't never know. Oh yeah, but I'd rather get that check first. Thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think I used to when the experience was added to the app. I just started with some shit. Like, oh no, when, that's where I I book everything through there. See, I didn't. I, I didn't know. I never knew. And um, what's the thing called? Expedia. Mm -hmm. Only because with Expedia, it, that's what I'm waiting for Airbnb to do is start giving you points for frequent usage. Or oh, yeah. Like with an ex, with Expedia, I've gotten like twenty dollars off of a booking or something just because I had X, Y, and Z number of points. And if you do it through this, and if you use that, it's double. And what's this the thing that we use? Oh, is it hotel? Something. One of those. We use one of those, but they give us a, a point system. So Airbnb mm -hmm. does need to have some type of point. Booking dot com. Yeah. Oh, speaking of points and such, uh, if you are new to Airbnb, <coughs> don't forget about my, I think it's an affiliate link, I don't know. It's one of those friend links, you know, hey, invite your friends to mm -hmm. Airbnb. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's in the uh, description box now. <laughs> That's a consistent thing, so I like to appreciate that shit. So, okay, as we've discussed everybody coming out here, the reasons why, as somebody that's like from here, how do, because in my mind, I'm thinking everybody kind of feels the same way about gentrification. Mm -hmm. So the way I feel about it in New York is like, I'm even starting to see it where I'm at. 
and I'm in Queens. Mm -hmm. And I can see why you want to do it in Brooklyn. I can see why you want to do it in Harlem. I, I see why people gentrify those areas. But it's like, fuck y'all, we don't got shit out here as mm -hmm. is. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck are you coming out here for? But I guess it's like, the, well, where they're doing it now is by the airport. Mm -hmm. And of course they're starting where you are near all the trains because without, the thing about Queens is that we're a two-tier a two tier area in terms of the transportation systems. You have to take a, where I am, you have to take a bus to get to the train. Okay. Or you have to drive to the train. Okay. You can walk, but it's gonna be like a two mile walk, generally, from depending on where you are, of course. But there are a bunch of different areas that are like that in Queens where it's a two fare zone and you either have to take a bus or you drive or whatever to the train. All of that being said, in the areas that of course are closer, they're gonna be more heavily populated and of course, kind of a mix depending on, because Queens is, I want to say, the most um, ethnically diverse borough in all of New okay. York. But it's also the largest, so that makes sense. But where they are coming into Southside is they're building up more around um, Sutton Boulevard, Jamaica, mm -hmm. um, Boulevard, Jamaica, <coughs> Jamaica Avenue. And there, we saw it when they started building more shit. Like, as soon as the hood got a Starbucks, it was like, all right, that's it. Yeah. Starbucks yeah. came in, and then like you know the gyms come the in. The yoga, the hot yoga. And, like the, the you yoga. see, and all of that's happening on the app. And then there was this whole I forgot what it was called. One of my friends told me this like four years ago. He said it's coming, and I'm like, what the fuck do you mean it's coming? Yeah. And it he, he was right. And it's because he's in um, the project. He has a the <coughs> contractor, so it's like. He's already been, you know, hearing about getting this project, that project, and he sees where all this stuff is happening. That being said, I get it, but it's like now I'm starting to see. Oh, so this white guy's walking a dog mm -hmm. around the corner from me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so nigga, you here here? Mm -hmm. Like this is like the third time I've seen you walking the same dog. Okay, so you live here now. You're not just because I also live by like a bunch <coughs> of uh, what do you call them? hotels okay. by the airport. So right. they've been redoing airports oh, and fixing stuff, and now they're actually building another hotel in this whole SIA hotel. So they're preparing. They're mm -hmm. preparing they're to happening. be here. And if you can't get property right there by the train, the next step is further out where mm -hmm. my mom is and mm -hmm. where my grandma is, where I am. This is where they're going to start buying the properties and stuff. In Queens, even when I was doing my... Um, apartment search because about a year ago I thought I was gonna have to move thankfully not wood I can keep staying there but I'm looking at and Queens is the cheapest mm -hmm. by far and um, yeah they're gonna start coming for that also because it's they're cheap coming. but it's still wild expensive <clears throat> and I hate seeing it because to me it's when I see them coming in it's kind of like oh so now you see the value that's here mm -hmm. it was just us there was no, no value, value. But now all of a sudden that this is more accessible to you because you don't want to spend $2,500 for a two-bedroom apartment, but you'll spend $1,800. Now all of a sudden it's like, oh, so now all y'all niggas is coming in here. But you fucking know where the people that are here. It's just now, oh, turn this down. Or this is too loud. Now all of a sudden it's a problem. Oh, so the, and what every is it? city has it. Like the one in D.C. with a guy who owns a phone store. He would always play go-go music out there. The gentrifiers came, they said they couldn't sleep, they ordered him to shut it down. DC had a freaking riot in the street and they just had go-go parties right there. You know, we can shame we have to do stuff like that to make a point. I saw another one, again, I'm sorry DC, you, you, <laughs> your examples just get publicized nationally. There's another guy, white guy, walking his dog through Howard University's campus and letting also. his dog shit and piss in the middle of campus. And then he gonna tell them if they don't like it, move to school. Like that they're disrespectful. I think Odell's from the West Side, um, and it's one of the most gentrified that are starting to be in Atlanta. Um, I think he'd be good. How does gentrifying? Your, what does your old neighborhood look like? Uh, right now. Um, right now. Tell me what it used to look like and what it looks like now. What it used to look like. Damn, I don't want to make sure I'm going to talk it down. Uh, Alright, so what it used to look like, I'm trying to pitch around through the neighborhood. It seemed like it was a lot of uh, the community was together, I guess, back then. So 
it was a lot of like black businesses and black owned businesses on the whole on down there every street for real like we owned the gas station when i was little um on simpson road um my uncle owned a bottle shop across the street from the gas station then we owned a corner store down the street from ashton simpson like Oh, that's just my family. Then we had other family that had. So I don't know. I feel like back then it was more black owned. Like you know, you can go and your uncle throwing a barbecue in the parking lot, and your grandma know them, and all the police officers know everybody. Like it was like that back then when I was younger, growing up on the west side. Now, um, it's like they're trying to do a lot of modern type looks to it. You know what I mean? Juice it up, make it look more. Um, like commercial type, I see a lot of commercial construction going on in the area. Um, a lot of uh, storages, a lot of more storages getting built from other businesses that was tore down that I see that's no longer there. So I was thinking maybe storages is, is because um, new high. homes and <laughs> new up to date uh, condos and stuff like that that they put uh, near the Atlanta area. The black businesses still there? Mm, not too much, no. Nah. <laughs> nah, they not. Yeah, the dome, the dome was the nail in the coffin for the west side. Mm -hmm. Okay, like, so that's generally this area, this west side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the dome was when Arthur Blank said, "This is what we doing," and they said, "Oh, y'all gonna get a Super Bowl." That was it for us. It didn't matter what the hell we did, and it sucks. Like I'm a home health nurse, um, and I was seeing patients that stay on the west side. At this time, let me tell y'all, these people are vicious. Like me and my mom own a home off Cascade, which is not necessarily the West Side, but the same thing con concept is happening. They would sit and see that this patient is having a nurse. The their mindset says, "Oh, they're dying," and they would follow me to my car. Hey, could you give her this piece of paper? Could you do this? Could you do this? Trying to, you know, get them to sell the house. Their favorite time to attack is after the owner of the home passes away. Because they know that the children, right, the family is, is what we're doing it. We don't want to do this house. We're gonna keep this house up. I ain't gonna pay for this. That type of stuff. That is their. They love it. They attack and That's it's right. sick how they walk around here and, and do that. And oh my God, this guy. His name is. He's so terrible that I need to. His name needs to be said. But he's a white guy. He's a landlord. He's a slumlord. Come to the west side. Walk around strapped up like he and like we at war. And. He just buying property and being a shitty landlord because he has no intentions of keeping these properties up. Right. He's just coming through buying them just so other people can buy them. They have they've taken the soul out of this side of town. Like the west side of town was where the affluent black people stay. Um, they get educated at the AUC. They start their lives close by, and then they built it like the west side of Atlanta was like black pride, like black eliteness. And but now that they have all of these people and this being like the new chocolate hub, like where there are more black creatives and then you've got um, the, st the studios and the actors and actresses and musicians and everybody out here, why, well, where are they going? Where are they now? Like far the, out. The t where they, they're going with that, that property value. They okay. don't, staying here on the west side, they're going to get city prices. This is city. They're going to get city prices. They come in here, they like, uh, -uh I want this eight bedroom house. Yeah, I'm not going to leave to LA or yeah, like, I'm not New York to or to come back to, to the, the same, same thing. So they're moving out in like, you ever heard of Sandy Springs and Marietta? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where a lot of people you got, are moving. You got at least four, oh, you got at least, I know yeah. For like the biggest rappers that's in Atlanta, they have houses like in Sandy Springs. Okay. From like Young Thug to the Mido, yeah, all of them, they got houses in Africa, Sandy Springs, and shit like that. Um, another thing I just thought about like the property value over here shot up like a lot since like I want to say maybe like four years ago. Mm -hmm. I got a friend who bought two properties at that time, and they was under a hundred thousand dollars. He said now them same properties in the area are like at two hundred thousand, a hundred and ninety thousand. So. Um, yeah, the property value sounded like this because, like, the dome here. Mm -hmm. and it, so it would make sense for us to buy property out mm -hmm. here now. We just can't afford it. Right. And we're also behind the eight ball. They've been buying for properties for this 10 years ago. Right. They knew this was going to happen years ago. So, like, we behind the eight ball. 
another way that you to get these people out and this this is what hurts me because my patients that I see on the west side they're living in paid for houses mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. this is this is where they live they raise their kids this is, this is their home but they're on fixed income so they raise the property tax mm -hmm. so that they can't afford the property tax mm -hmm. and then these people end up having to lose their paid for um and then they buy them from them for a little bit. Now they'll buy a house from them for $85,000, mm. put a half a million dollar home on it, and then sell it for more than that. Right. Like they don't even break break even with them the right way. So it's just the whole process is just terrible. It is, it's sad, um, it's just sad actually. I feel like a jewel was dropped is like, um, it's spreading out. Like it, it started in the city, you know what I mean? The prices went up and now they doing that to the farther outskirts. So now they making the outskirt more like city like, you feel me? Okay. And I feel like those property and those ain't the something that we probably got the advantage of going and buy because it's still the outskirts right now. You feel me? Okay. So like like how they tried to put Amazon and Stonecrest. They changed uh Stonecrest to Did you change Lithonia? Like, I mean, they changed Lithonia like, to the city of Stonecrest. So like they trying to put like a Emory office or some shit. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get, they're trying to but it's a lot of land out there, a lot of mm -hmm. lots. You know what I mean? Like they building new nice ass gas stations with coffee stuff. So they're you know, getting like, ready for it to. But they, that's a black that's a black owned city. Okay. That, well, not black owned, but that's a black city. So like what happened in Atlanta was, I don't even know how long ago this happened, but people got it like the city of Decatur thing. Like oh, I'm finna um. We finna draw a line in the sand and we're mm -hmm. gonna go ahead and apply for our own city or whatever. That's how the city of Decatur got where it is, where the John City of Johns Creek. All those cities, those small Peachtree City, Peachtree Corners, those individual cities, okay. they're all kind of came from that thought process. Let's just go ahead and mark our mark our Zone stuff our territory so that we can stop MARTA and right, we can do that, all that kind of stuff. So legislation. We mm -hmm. we've gotta be able to get this in writing. Right. About it. So Lithonia is on um, that's why it's out that it's out in the east okay as far as atlanta and it was just like and they built this mall out there called the mall stone crest and then um they found this like rock out there called arabian mountain so it got zoned for like national parks and they can't touch it do all that stuff mm -hmm. then they built arabian mountain high school then they built elementary school like new schools and then they just kind of went ahead and applied for the city of Stonecrest, but this particular city is a black city. Okay. So, us trying to get Amazon was big for us. Um, they're building like a sports complex. They're getting Emory's coming out there. Kites is already out there. So like, it's a black city on the outskirts that's on the come up. Like, okay. me and my mom talk about every day. Like, we might need to try to put some money out there because do it. Shit. Yeah. Th this is what it. I mean, the mayor lives in my neighborhood. The mayor of the city of Stonecrest stays in our neighborhood. So yes, they talk on a more personal level about the trajectory of the city. And it's, they wanted to do some amazing things and I think it could, we just gotta stick together, you know. Mm -hmm. we'll and have space to keep expanding the area? Or is it like, is it going outward or is it going upward? Like, is it gonna be? It's gonna, it's probably gonna have to go up because moving to, west so moving towards the right or the left is the city so you're getting closer to the city so you can't go and then moving out east is that covington county where i mm -hmm. told you they were just like uh, 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 they got they. yeah they you know they that's their thing so it's just it's like a place it's just a space um mm -hmm. it's room to grow upward but let me tell you when something grow and bring in enough money they'll move mm -hmm. kanye will get with it you know, it'll, they'll make it happen because they want, you know, a piece of the pot. Right. Um, right now, Stonecrest is the place where people from Conyers go to eat and shop and, you know, restaurants and those different mm -hmm. things. And Now, question for you. Who is able to do all... These are, I feel like these are regular civilians, just like the people with money, though. Like, it's just That's people. all it takes is a dollar. You, you got to have a dollar. You just end up... Because I'm trying to think of... What was that show I was watching? I was watching... Hand of God, mm -hmm. and um, I can't remember exactly what all of their little titles were, but it's like these are regular civilians. They just have money, and they're like on like these city councils, or they're on like these little 
thing like boards mm -hmm. and they make all of the decisions and they purchase the properties and they're good friends and you know golfing buddies or whatever mm -hmm. with the mayor because mm -hmm. you live up the block mm -hmm. and then you're you just have all this access so it's not like we can't be part of this either no no niggas that buy property make money Dirty. and right and it, uh, it kind of like breaks my heart that but it's a fair a very fair assessment when it's kind of like when you get your money and then you move out the hood mm -hmm. and then you don't come back to the hood mm -hmm. but it's like I understand that it's not exactly safe to stay in the hood for a lot of people and it's really fucked up because then that goes back to we should love us more than anybody mm -hmm. else should we should take care of us more than anybody else should but it goes the same way for the community as it does for the person that leaves the community because mm -hmm. if the community is not going to look out for you and the community is not going to keep you safe it's, you may want to do for the community but you may not be able to do it from the community mm -hmm. yeah. so it's kind of like Nipsey he stayed in the community and look what happened yeah. and then you got people like Diddy or Oprah that moved out of the community, but then they still are able to give back to the community. So it's just like, yeah, people are always going to shit on them and say that they don't, they don't do enough, or that they sold out because now look at where they are and it's not the same as the community. But it's what the fuck are you supposed, supposed to do? To, I think after you reach a certain level of status quo, you're gonna lose a sense of losing no matter what you do. Because then you don't be, have the same issues. Yeah, that the people community don't be looking for fault, always. faults in you or whatever. Um, I think hmm, you have to adopt the issues of the community, even if they aren't yours, because they are yours. Right. Um, babies not eating at school because they can't afford it. That's not particularly your issue, but, but that's, right. that's your issue. Like, uh, the baby up the street from you ain't ate lunch all day. She eat once a day. Or whether it's Kids can't do their homework because they got to come home and raise kids. Yeah. Like, that's not your issue, but that's something that's, like, tearing through your community. Yeah. So you just kind of have to look at these issues that aren't your personal issues, but they're still your cultural issues. Mm -hmm. um, one thing we do know is black people, ain't nobody going to help us but us. Yeah. So, and I don't want to take that back. Other people will help us. Ain't nobody gonna help us like we can help us. Mm -hmm. Can't nobody help nobody like that person can help themselves. Right, and that's the, that's the thing. Yeah, so if we just kind of look at it like that, like I, I have, I take, I have a problem that kids aren't eating. Yeah, I have a that's a big, big, big problem for me because it's people who stay in less than a ten mile radius from somebody who's hungry who donate money to feed someone else in a third world country. Yes. And so I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying, like, we get a lot of babies that get looked over. Mm -hmm. Like, it's still people donating to feed people in third world countries, and we got kids in cages yeah. on our on our soil right now. So I think we, we need to handle our in-house issues. I think when people, like you said, when you were saying, like, you just got to get the money, you got to have, you also have to have a mindset. Mm -hmm. Like, when power comes into play, people nut the fuck up. Um, when money comes into play, people lose it. So, like, we just kind of got to learn how to, I don't know what I'm trying to, like, you have to have a mindset along with that dollar, along with that. Like, cause if you just want to do something for you, if you're doing it for power, if you're doing it because I want to go in the history books as mayor of this new black city, then that's dumb. Right. Like, don't do it. Do something else. Selfish. Start your own foundation and call it your first and last name foundation and you can do everything and it dopes on you because it's in your name. But don't run for community positions or positions that are meant for the people. No, that's what the power that's what the power is for. Yeah, but and that's, that's what the that's, people, that's people, people misuse the power. power. Use once the power they, for once they get power it's just stupid. Matching shit it happens. by doing for yeah, other people. And like it's not really a lot And of people business. waste money and on stupid shit. Like but what can the average person do? Like now that we know, for example, we're all very certain that there is somebody's child in our public, our local, wherever your local is, there's somebody's child in that public school district that's not eating. Unless you live in one of those districts where 
your, you know, like um, like a Conyers or mm-hmm. like a city educator where you know that your public schools are like top ranked, all the mm-hmm. kids are well educated and stuff. Now, there's probably somebody in there because if you watch a plenty of movies, a lot of people will front like they have the money and then mm-hmm. not have the money. It's hungry, it's hungry baby. Mm-hmm. There's ev- they're the everywhere. But what I wish that there were, or maybe there is, if you, um, like, can you just pay somebody lunch? Or, you know what I mean? Like, how does yeah, an average I, person. I think. Well, I think of what I know and what I've seen is if you just consi- just stay consistent with your effort, whether it's I'm paying, I'm gonna pay for these two baby pencils, or right, I'm gonna make sandwiches and go hand them out. One thing I do know is efforts grow. Mm-hmm. Like if you stay consistent, somebody is gonna see like you come out here every Tuesday and give these people food. I'm gonna come with you next Tuesday. Like right. literally, that's just how things happen, and. One person can make a difference. A grassroots effort can 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 really do something. And like you said, one person can make a, a difference. And I think that if people just start with themselves and start small, when you're on that path, if that's what you're trying to do, like you'll find something that you can connect with and grow. Like it's so much easier to reach across and grow up than it is to reach up and come yeah. up. Like. This Miss Ann might have a food bank mm-hmm. where she goes say about her groceries, and Miss Joe might be giving out water, and you the person that give out sandwiches. What happened when you, Miss Joe, and Miss Ann all get together? Right, that's somebody got a full meal. Yeah, like you, you get a bread, you get a sandwich, you get water, and you get groceries. Mm-hmm. You know, all together, and I think that's where it can start because. I think when people start to do like grand things or say like I want to open a food bank, I'm gonna miss a demographic that I didn't even know existed, and mm-hmm. that demographic is gonna fill away. And I didn't even, you know, I didn't even know, but I feel like if everybody, if somebody from that demographic speaks up and says, "Hey, well, wait, I've been doing this and I've been doing that," then that and like lightens me to say, "Okay, I need to do this too. I can't do it by myself, and neither can the government." Like people are expecting this. City of Stonecrest, oh, but well, they need to figure out how we gonna eat. They can't do it by themselves. It's like, I can't do it by themselves. Yeah, they're regular people with their own set of right. what it is they're trying to. We need to go to our town hall meetings. Like, town hall meetings are so not frequently visited that they're held in public libraries because they're, the crowd is so small. Right, it's like, like our town hall meetings thing. need the to same be 12 people. people over and over again, the same 30 people, the same voices speaking up, never any help. People don't even cut the town hall meeting on TV and look at it. Like mm-hmm. our town hall meetings need to be an auditorium. They need, it needs to be packed. Y'all need to be cutting people questions off. Like we, we, you know, we've been going too long, but our town hall meetings aren't like that. I watch some of our town hall meetings and it's the same effort over and over again. It's the same faces. It's the same age group. I, <clears throat> in the city of Stonecrest, we had this young girl, uh, I wish I knew her name because her name deserves to be said, but she ran mm-hmm. for something. She was the youngest ever to do it. And I voted for her just because she was young, but it should be more of her. Right. She shouldn't be that much that, of That life. only person. And her efforts haven't stopped. You know, just because she didn't win, she didn't just be like, all right, I'm going to go back to being 23. Yeah. Just go to a bar. Like, you know, she didn't do Mm -hmm. that. Like, she kept her efforts going. And I think we all need to do something like that. Like, if we all have to take some time out for service. Oh, absolutely. I feel that um, that's a good way to, um, that'll be the closing message then. How, think of a way that you individually can affect your community. Whether it be because I know that I am kind of like the plug in my friend group, mm-hmm. where it's like, whatever you need, I know somebody that talks. Mm-hmm. If you need X, I know somebody that will be able to get you X mm-hmm. or knows somebody that can figure whatever it is you need. You need mm-hmm. a, a bass guitar player, but mm-hmm. has like some kind of experience in Calypso and shit. Boom. I know who I'm calling to get that for mm-hmm. you. Pretty, you know, specific request mm-hmm. for somebody else. But anyway. That being said, I think that if everybody tries to plug with a friend that they know does something that is remotely revolving an area of your interest. For me, I have a soft spot for the kids. Mm -hmm. I love the babies. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking of three friends in particular that I know work for the public school system. 
I personally am committing to reaching out to the three of them to see if there's any way in their school communities I can consistently donate $20 a month mm -hmm. to paying. Because it ain't like these school lunches cost a lot. No. But us, we'll go, you know, blow $50 at brunch or something. Oh, you know what I mean? $25 for Bobby this Mimosa. Do that um, twice in a month and somebody kid could have eaten for the whole month or for okay. half a, you know what I mean? Like whatever it is. So I think that if you just start by reaching out to your friends, like if you're very big on, say, um, the arts, if you have a friend that's a dance teacher, if you have a friend that volunteers at like a community center or is like um, a coach for somebody's game, uh, you know, what them babies do, like their sports and shit mm -hmm, like that, mm -hmm. reach out to those friends in whatever area it is that means something to you, or even if it don't mean something to you, just an area where you know your people are working with other people that need help and see how you can fucking help. It doesn't have to be something financial. It could be even something that you show up and you help them clean the auditorium after basketball practice. Mm -hmm. Just a way, like Shanti said, that you can be consistent because it doesn't have to be something grandiose. You don't have to create a movement in order for there to be movement. Social media is a problem too. If you're doing something and you're recording it for likes, yeah. don't do it. Yeah, you, your hands are much more free when they're not holding up. A phone, like yeah. don't, um, people go through things um, that are quite humbling, that mm -hmm. could be, you know, kind of embarrassing. Like, you don't have to record. If you're feeding someone who's sleeping in their car, you don't have to record. Yeah. You walking up doing that because now I know what kind of car they sleep in. And yeah. And I'm going to be like, oh, it's all right. You know what? That, one time I seen this lady on Instagram. She was sleeping in the car, and I thought, you know, that's unnecessary. Yeah. Um, good things come back tenfold. Whether you record it or not, you're going to get it back. You're going to get whatever recognition you're looking for, you're going to get it. Right. Someone's going to notice that you've been in the same place every Tuesday. Mm -hmm. and um, right. And seeing an article in the newspaper is valuable, but it's not on Instagram, so people won't think that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not on Facebook, so people won't think that. Um, you just have to be genuine. Right. And the things that you do. Like, don't make a commitment to do something that's not you. Yeah. Right? If... Uh, this lady, she uh, in LA, I believe, she does like pop up showers and haircuts okay. for homeless people. I don't do hair. I don't <laughs> cut hair. But it's so cool and so grand that somebody will try to mimic that, you yeah. know, and that's not their lane. And they, they reckon out, like, that's not my lane. I couldn't do that. Um, I, I'm healthcare. So, what can I do? Mm -hmm. I can do screenings, blood pressure screenings, or I understand dieting is like, hand in hand with healthcare. Like that needs to be my lane somewhere there. Like I don't need to be in a school with pre Kers <laughs> trying to color because that's just not my lane. And right. that's not something I can consistently do because it doesn't fit my life. Um, me going to a preschool class is something that I would have to, you know, make time to do versus me getting in a patient's face. That's yeah. something I can do every day on the I day. I can throw $20 for anything. Yeah. And I know that that's me. With right. my, my level of consistency is, what can I pay on time? Right. That's it. Then whatever it is. You got to know what your, your strength is. is. Know what, you know, I always tell people that's not what my degree is in. I can't help you with it. I can be helpful, girl. That's me. But I, that is me I, doing math. Right. Mm. I know what the 25% off is yeah. going to be if it's on sale. Yeah, that's I know it. what that change is going to be. Other than that, numbers that's aren't me. my thing. Yeah. So find what it is you can do. And then just keep consistently doing it. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, that was fun. All right, guys. So um, you know where you can you know where you can find me. I'm on the Instagrams. Um, I forget it's underscore D Carry letter D C A R R I E. You can also go to dcarry.com for um, the link to. Ooh, I'll commit to posting some links of different places that. Um, you guys may be able to throw some of your coins at in Flint. terms of, um, yeah. Flint still doesn't have water, and we're in year four or five. Yeah. You can use the donation. Yeah, but I would have to find some place that they're actually going to get that little money. Miss Flint, the little girl who won Miss Flint at the time when it happened, 
her efforts are like super strong and consistent. That's who I donate to. Okay. Um, I got a t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> for donating it. But Little Miss Flint, she's on Twitter, honey. And she is adamant and passionate and like eight. I don't think I need to put that. But we'll definitely put that. Um, what else? Um, oh, so go to dcarry.com for that kind of stuff. What was, um, go ahead and put where people can find you. My intelligent, mm -hmm. beautiful. You all can so find me, uh, incredible little cousin. You can find me on um, Instagram, Ashanti Jaha. I have a Twitter. Uh, Spell it because nobody's going to know how to. A S H A N T I J A H A. And my Twitter handle is in the link for that. Um, okay. But I don't even know my Twitter name. It's a little sad. <laughs> but I do know my Instagram. It's Ashanti Jaha. That's it. Go ahead, boyfriend. Come on, where can you be found? I don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my Instagram is P Money Major. Uh, just a P and Money Major. My Twitter is. Um, she rubbing off on me. My Instagram is P Money Major. Um, all my other links, YouTube and everything, will be in the bio. So, yeah, I enjoyed the podcast too, by the way. I got a question I want to ask you if you don't mind me asking. Okay. Because I see it's titled Travel. Um, I would want to know where all you've been to. Like, where all countries have you traveled to? That's so, it. Top um, five. Top five. Oh, that's a lot. Gotta, yeah. Right. Top five favorites. Your top five favorites. Top five favorites. Easy two is Cuba and Colombia. Um... I would say Cuba, Colombia, St. Martin, mm. Norway. Oh, I had Norway pictures were hard. I got to see the Northern Lights. I'm a star girl. Anything celestial, I am down with the shits for. Um, last one. I had fun at St. Martin because I was there with my mama. Okay. We had fun. <coughs> my mama funny. Yes, she when is. When she not getting on my nerves, she's funny. <laughs> like, she fun, like, big funny. Big funny. Um... And I enjoyed Cuba because I had a good ass black ass time. Same reason why I enjoyed Colombia, good ass black ass time. You know what? I guess I'll finish off with um, keep it cute. I'll say um, Bermuda, just because that was the first time I left the country. Okay. So Bermuda always has a special little place in my heart. When I see Goslings, I get excited because they that was. Um, the first place I went for liquor back on my little city tree. Yeah, I had a whole box, like the world's finest chocolate size uh -huh. box. Like I had a whole box worth of liquor. And of course my nan was like, Oh, bring me back some of the um the Appletons. The Appletons. You know me and Daddy like the Appletons, my grandpa. <laughs> so I think I bought them back like five bottles. Four bottles, three bottles. I don't know. I bought them back. They were like twenty dollars a bottle. So I was like, I'll bring you back. She's like, I saved some money. That's so cute. Like, okay. So yeah, and I saved for me just because that was the first place that I went, so it was, um, I learned a lot there, like in terms of just figuring stuff out. So yeah, those I guess would be my top five. So give me one, just your worst, the worst country you've been to, the worst experience you had when you went to that country. I'm thinking. Or city, because those are two of my favorite cities. Oh yeah, city too. Yeah, nice city. I don't know what's up with cities. Um, She's looking at her tattoos, please, guys, for reference. <laughs> it was just pretty dope. Um, maybe, but um, I had an anxiety attack in the airport in London. Like I had, like nothing was lining up. Like it was miserable Everything. when I got there. <laughs> but then, like I had to kind of just pull it in, let your balls drop, and make shit happen so it ended up not being the word i actually had fun when i went out mm -hmm. um but that was probably the most uncomfortable i've ever been okay while traveling just because i was just mad nervous I, like i had overdrafted in the bank i ain't have no place to stay <laughs> like i just showed up and was just like okay i'll figure it out when i get there and i realized oh, that that shit ain't <laughs> oh, man. she showed up to london and said i'm gonna figure it out when i get here yeah that's and crazy. then yeah, I figured it out, but then, like, yeah, that's not the traveling for me. I wanted to try that, you know, mm -hmm. figure it out when you go Get travel. Mm -mm. Okay. Mm -mm. So, yeah, that would be the problem. I could think, yeah, that, that'd be it. 
Well, I enjoyed. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here, because I know what the fuck I was going to talk about. Like, now these are my have, favorite ones. That now, you have just a home, so much now you have a, a podcast home here in Atlanta. Yes, whenever I come out to Atlanta, mm-hmm. I will be coming to the, what is it, RCIE? Mm-hmm. The RCI, RCIE Studios, the Mel Baby Pleasant part of the 100 <laughs> You know me, honey. Yeah, well, <laughs> on it. Um, but yeah, so thank you for having me here. I appreciate it. Um, I had a good ass black ass time and I am oh yeah so let's wrap this up we can try to get some pictures and okay. there's also like a photo studio in here so you know mm-hmm. it's now door. we're gonna go do things okay thanks guys <laughs> bye bye guys all right let me make sure the room not booked one time I had went to Hawaii and I I got down but we finished just in time